Yeah, the Friday game's a little unique. I don't know if I've had one of those since my Division II days. But at the same time, uh, we're excited to go out. Penn State's one of those teams that, you know, I think was predicted to be strong. Uh, and uh, they've been really good, and they've had some tough times. And uh, uh, it'll be a, a good uh, road test for us, kind of see and gauge our, our advancement and see what, how we're doing as a team. Is, your, is the Penn State style more conducive to, like, a free-flowing game than maybe the – game the other night against Wisconsin? Well, I don't know that Wisconsin's ever going to allow you to free flow this right. year or, or any time. You know, they they, um, they make it difficult. Uh, Penn State can, you know, can really guard you with pressure, and it's like almost a feast or famine. You know, I think they lead the league in steals, uh, but yet you can get some high percentage shots off of that too, whereas um, Wisconsin's just kind of a rock fight. Right. I mean, they're just in position all the time, and there's nothing easy. So it's not like that? It, I don't believe so. Okay. Hey, with Tony Carr, how big of a challenge is he? I know not only does he lead him in scoring, but he's averaging almost five assists per game. And when he's on, kind of as he goes, Penn State goes. Yeah, Tony is a terrific player. Uh, big, strong guard. Uh, I mean, he's got a huge potential. Uh, you know, Mike Watkins in at the center spot is, I think he blocked like eight of our shots in the Big Ten tournament, right? And, and then you've got Lamar Stevens, who I think is playing really well, and Josh Reeves, who's probably as efficient as anybody and one of the better defenders. So uh, I would expect Josh to play. I'm not sure. You know, he sat out against Indiana, but I think he'll be back. And when you get the full complement of Penn State, that, that, that group's really good. This atmosphere, well, how, how would you compare this atmosphere to what you came off of at Purdue? <laughs> Different. Uh, in what and, ways um, would you say? Uh, in what ways it will be uh, less energetic, in terms of you know that sheer enthusiasm for the game. It's a larger facility. Uh, they don't quite draw as well, so it's a little quieter. Uh, you know, big, spacious, uh, empty spots that you know. I mean, noise goes to die. So uh, you've got to bring your own energy. Your team's got to be talking to each other. They got to be ready to go from the hop because Penn State, Pat Chambers teams always play really hard no matter what. They create energy like crazy. Okay. With you guys both being from quote unquote football schools, do you feel like there's a lot of similarities between these two programs, between Penn State and Nebraska? Uh, I guess I've never considered it that way just because they're so far east, you know, uh, as a peer institution. But I guess you could make that case. And, and uh, I think Pat's really um, upgraded the talent level. Uh, you look at those four or five guys that we just talked about, and that's a, uh, those, are te those are kids that anybody in the league would take. And I don't think you could always say that about either program, too. And I think we've got to upgrade in talent, too. So should be a fun ball game. Jordy kind of had a breakout game against Penn State last year at home. With him doing what he did the other night, do you think this maybe is a timely game for him to kind of keep his confidence going and everything? Well, we'll see. You know, I mean, he's struggled. There's no doubt this year that, that he has, uh, uh, you know, not been at his best. And hopefully he can build up that second half. Hey, Evan, after the game, the, the guys kind of, seems pretty low-key just in their emotions after a big Big Ten win. Was that kind of just an attitude within this team that you weren't satisfied with the performance and the way you played, even though it came in a victory? Yeah, it's just an attitude that craves improvement. Um, of course, we were happy, happy about the win, but we also know that we didn't play our best game. So we understood that we need to play better, and you know I appreciate that about this team. Evan, when you heard your coach talk about having to create energy at Penn State, what are some ways you can do that? as a player, as a team? Well, it starts with the starting five. Uh, me, myself being the captain, but also our bench. Uh, our bench has been great this year. You know, The louder they are, the more into the game they are. I think that the players on the court feed off of that. What kind of a challenge does Tony Carp uh, present for some of you? I'm guessing you're going to be guarding some, him some at least in that game. Uh, he's a really good player. He plays with really good pace. Um, you know, you never speed him up. You don't turn him over. He's just really a steady guard. You know, he's added elements to his game from last year. But you know, I look forward to the challenge, the matchup. Hey, Thomas. Same question I asked Evan. What ideas do you have for creating energy in a um, game like this? It starts with the um, um, the warm ups. Um, just starting off there. Um, yeah. And we do a little thing before the game that um, is pretty energetic. And then is that the one Coach Moe's involved in? Moe's yeah, involved what's that? in that one. He, um, we have a little circle, and he, I can't say, but he does <laughs> his thing. Right? <laughs> he does his thing? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. We don't know what it's called. But, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, Thomas, just, uh, you know, last match with Wisconsin, you'd be able to get to the rack uh, the way that you were. How important is it for you to be comfortable 
uh, doing that when you get into conference play here and kind of kind of find your feet in, in the league? Um, I think it starts with the, the big setting on um, the good screens and just flowing with the offense. Uh, I think that's the way I, I can get into control of the game a little bit. For you, how much more comfortable do you feel now as opposed to maybe at the start of the season? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not answer that. It's not like like when I'm on the court, I feel like the, the same way every time I get on the court. Like it's not like it changes. Tom's got great confidence in himself, and you can see the way he plays is the same way. So I, I think that you know, in his mind, he's like, I could do this every day, coach, right? Yeah. And uh, it's like just to like get me out there. But uh, that's the cool thing about him is that he doesn't act like a freshman. Tim, after the game, Glenn tweeted that he knows he's been playing poorly. Thank the team for you know supporting him and kind of guaranteed he was going to be back on track. Has um, gone any further in trying to boost his confidence up and finding ways to get him back to being the old Glenn? Yeah, I met Glenn after the game. We didn't watch any tape, and I just said, Glenn, who you are is good enough. You know, you don't have to try and be somebody you're not. You know, and. And we've been on him, you know, uh, trying to find Jordy on an easy roll. That's something Ty Webster really made life easy for him, you know, last year, I think. And we were trying to get Glenn to do the same thing. And sometimes I think that kind of altered his game, too. So it's just kind of interesting how that all plays out. And you look at it, and I've just met with Glenn, and I'm like, Glenn, you just be you, and that's fine. I said, you want to watch Iowa from last year? You know, I, I like that guy. And, uh, and he laughed, and, and I think Glenn will be right. And, and you know, and he is good enough, just as himself, and he doesn't have to try and be something he's not. When you have guys that you know want to be in leadership roles and embrace that, that's something you encourage, but you also don't want to take it to the extreme and, and put that much pressure on yourself. How do you kind of balance things with with the guy like that who wants to take that leadership role, but also, you know, maybe is a little too hard on himself at times. Yeah, there, I think you have to, as a coach, just kind of gauge the personality of the player, the confidence level of the player, what's going on with the team. I think our team's in a pretty good spot overall. We know we're not playing our best basketball. And I, I remember even speaking with a guy like Glenn and, and Evan uh, the other day. You know, I mean, what's your biggest frustration? Well, everybody, that we're not all hitting on the same cylinders. Like, we got two guys going some nights and, and, and four guys going one, but we don't have all six or seven guys going. And it's a good problem to have, but we all want to reach our potential. And we don't want to be sitting here in another five weeks saying the same thing. So, you know, just getting on everybody, uh, you know, on the same page in terms of feeling comfortable in their role and what they're doing takes some time. We knew that from the get-go, you know, just settling in. I think now you can see where it's just we're not quite there. And, and it's not without a lot of work and dedication and and uh, and care because the guys really do care. That's the cool part. Evan, going off that question, just how have you embraced that role of being the leader on this year's team? Uh, just trying to pick other guys up. Like he said, like I haven't been playing as well as of late, but, you know, my team agent – Teammates always encourage me to stay positive, and I know I can affect the game in many more ways than just scoring the offense. So I just try to uplift somebody, you know, like Thomas, or uplift somebody else, and maybe that'll get me going. But all I really care about is winning at the end of the day. But the efficiency, you know, that James has shown, you know, from a field goal percentage standpoint, the last few games of conference play, how important is it for him? You know, he's a scorer, he's going to get some points, but to be as efficient as he has been lately. Well, James has been great. Uh, he's been able to get the basket score, make his foul shots. He's played good defense. Uh, his efficiency numbers are really, really high. And I think that goes to a product, too. You have to look at a guy like Evan Taylor is making 50% of his threes. Anton Gill is. Thomas can make threes. So we're getting more teams to stay with our shooters, and now it's giving him driving lines and Isaac Copeland driving lines and Roby, too. So that's what you hope is that you've got that balance. You know, and um, and we haven't got that. We've got it a lot of places. We haven't got it quite inside yet, uh, and and that's what we're looking forward to. You know, as we continue to develop our team, is that everybody kind of knows their role, what they're doing, and playing the best they can play. Anything else for coaching players? Thanks, guys. Yeah.